Now, when I say I'm doing Bon Appetit's entire perfect Thanksgiving menu, I really mean the few in which I can consume without passing out in a anaphylactic shock. Ooh. Because of my food allergies, I have to omit the squash salad with pecans, the Brussels sprouts with pistachios, and the pecan pumpkin pie. Which in reality leaves us with the most important, most classic Thanksgiving plates anyway, which are the glazed roast turkey, the mashed potatoes and gravy, the cranberry sauce, and of course, the cornbread sausage stuffing. If you are completely lost, let me catch you up to speed for a minute. Over the past month or so, all the Bon Appetit chefs have taken one dish from a classic Thanksgiving meal and put in their own unique spins on it, experimented with a ton of different varieties, and basically presented us with what they think is the best Thanksgiving table you could lay your eyes on. This is going to take me a very long time and a lot of ingredients, I feel, so let's get right into this. So as you can probably imagine, this is going to take many days, many grueling hours, but I'm up for the task. It is one of my favorite holidays, and we are going to start with the turkey. As you can probably tell on your own, I have never butchered a turkey by myself. This one is also super different because you break down the raw turkey before you season it or cook it at all. Obviously, most of the time you cook a full turkey in the oven for Thanksgiving, but in the essence of time and flavor and technique, really, we are going to break this down into pieces. I already have to begin asking you guys for forgiveness because I didn't show you the ingredients list. I do for most of the other recipes. This one, for whatever reason, I forgot. Uh, the most important thing about this is once you get your dry rub on here, you have to let it sit in the fridge for at least 24 hours, if not two full days. Obviously, if I went through every single ingredient, every single prep step, we'd be here for hours. Uh, so I'm gonna leave all the original videos and the recipes down in the description if you wanna go check them out for yourself. I was able to get my decent looking turkey pieces fully rubbed with my seasoning, fully transferred onto a wire rack and into my oven for at least an hour and a half until our internal temperature reads 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, I'm gonna start with my gravy because I think I could probably just simmer this away all day. And for this, you're gonna to wanna to grab some olive oil and flour, some red wine vinegar and chicken wings, some sherry wine, cremini mushrooms, butter, whole black peppercorns, MSG, some chicken stock, some shallots, fresh garlic, and fresh parsley. I started by prepping all of my aromatics, which will be the base of our gravy. Uh, that basically consists of our shallot, our garlic, and mushrooms. This gravy is pretty different because you can prep this with its own ingredients days in advance if you want. You don't have to rely on your drippings from your turkey, which is nice to know that you have one less thing to worry about on Thanksgiving Day. Uh, but I know a lot of people prefer the flavor that your drippings might give you, so by all means do it on the same day if you want. Today, I for one am not taking any shortcuts. I'm crushing my own black peppercorns. I am making my own stock with three pounds of chicken wings. I would have much rather deep fried these and ate them while watching football, but today we're gonna use them all for our stock. Once you've got all of your wings broken down, you wanna roast them off in a super hot oven and then adding in all your aromatic ingredients and popping it back in to roast a lot more. You'll see as these recipes progress, they focus on super intense, concentrated flavors a lot. They use a lot of fresh garlic, a lot of fresh herbs. So I'm assuming based on the amount of work that this all entails, we should have a really nice end product. Now there's a lot of interesting things about this gravy recipe. The fact that it finishes with some red wine vinegar and MSG, but also the fact that you pretty much do a reverse roux. Usually you start with butter and flour in the pan to thicken sauces. This one you actually end with a mix of butter and flour. That is what's gonna be the main thickener of this gravy. Become nice and thick and shiny. And then right before you go to serve your gravy, you finish it off with a little bit of the vinegar and about a teaspoon of the MSG. 
For whatever reason, they don't want you to do that ahead of time. They want you to wait until the last minute. Third on our list today is our cornbread stuffing. I've never thought to put cornbread or any type of sausage in my stuffing, so this should be interesting either way. Before we do anything, obviously, we have to make some cornbread. Could I have milled my own dried corn and made it that way? Yes, but I'm gonna skip steps where I can and use this instant box that you just have to mix with uh, some water and some eggs. I try to choose my battles somewhat wisely and that is not one I'm willing to tackle right now. Besides the fresh cornbread, we're gonna need some thyme and sage, some dry white wine and some corn nuts, some more chicken stock and some breakfast sausages, eggs, garlic, a jalapeno pepper, an onion, some fresh celery, and some butter. You know that shit is going down around here when I don't even show me chopping up my onion and celery. I just had so much going on at once, I was skipping steps. I didn't really remember what I filmed, what I didn't. It was just a very hectic two day span. What I do know is that I started with a ton of butter, a ton of my celery and onion, some of those fresh herbs, and then eventually I had to grind up some of my corn nuts and throw those in as well. You're gonna deglaze the pan with your white wine, and once that is pretty much cooked off, you can finish it with your fresh herbs. As far as our cornbread goes, we have to cut these in about half to three quarters of an inch cubes, and then let them roast in the oven until they're completely dried out, a little bit browned because they have quite a bit of moisture to absorb in order to become stuffing. I'm sure a lot of you at home are probably thinking the same thing. This is way beyond anything I've ever thought of doing for stuffing. Usually it's just a matter of like mashing some bread and some breadcrumbs and eggs and things together and then shoving it in your turkey. Not Chris Morocco, I will tell you that. We also have to decase and cook off some of our breakfast sausage, about one and a half pounds to be exact. And once that is cooked, we are going to combine that with our cubes of cornbread and our vegetable mixture in a bowl that was very clearly too small for the three. Eventually I just dumped everything in a huge pot along with our stock and our three eggs that I mixed together pretty thoroughly. And according to the recipe, you wanna give this quite a few minutes to sit and absorb all of that stock. Toss it around a couple times so everything gets absorbed and cohesive. And then in a buttered baking dish, we are going to toss this down and bake it away in a 425 degree oven until you got a nice crust around the sides and the top of your stuffing. I'm not exactly keeping count here, but if I had to give you a rough guess, I would say I was about 18 hours in at this point, obviously chopped up among recipes, but still. We also have to get our cranberry sauce going and into the fridge as quick as possible so it can set fully. That is gonna be comprised of some white sugar and unflavored gelatin, kosher salt, unsweetened cranberry juice, some fresh cranberries, fresh sage, orange, and cardamom pods. If you couldn't already guess, there was quite a bit of preparation for this video. I had to order quite a few things online, the cardamom pods, the MSG. Uh, also, we need to let this set at least 10 hours in the fridge. And we had already let our turkey sit in the fridge for 30 hours, so this was a long time coming. Luckily for us, the cranberry sauce is pretty straightforward. You wanna bring all of your spices, your juice, and your fresh cranberries to a boil, and then just let them simmer away until all of those cranberries start to burst, and you get a nice, thick, syrupy liquid just like this. To the pan, we're going to add some unflavored gelatin, my least favorite ingredient that's ever been created, really, which obviously will help firm up the mix and allow it to set so it can be sliced at the end. If you didn't already know and you wanna be disgusted, unflavored gelatin is pretty much just crushed up animal bones and it smells like a dead carcass too, so. A perfect example of what you think is just so innocent and just a yummy food as a child, and you turn into adult and reality hits really hard. We are going to move on to our very last dish, which is our mashed potatoes. Grab yourself four pounds of Yukon Gold potatoes, some kettle cooked potato chips, 
whole milk and black pepper, some whole wheat bread, butter, thyme, salt, garlic, paprika, lemon, and parsley. Now this is no shade mint, but it is very rare when I'm able to use a technique that I've only ever seen Tasty use in recipes in real life or from other websites. And here is a perfect example. I do not have a food mill, I do not have a potato ricer, but if you have a metal strainer just like this one, you will be able to rice your potatoes and get a super smooth mashed potato. If you don't believe me, just watch the video, but also I've done this for the Ali Go French cheesy potato dish and it worked out perfectly, so that's why I'm trying it again here. Just like I said earlier, these recipes are pretty much about extracting as much flavor out of your ingredients as possible. This potato recipe is no different. Your milk mixture is basically comprised of some fresh garlic, a bunch of fresh herbs, obviously a ton of butter. To finish it off, a strip of lemon zest, and this is pretty much as simple as letting it come to a boil and then letting everything steep in that hot milk for pretty much as long as it takes you to prepare those potatoes. When that magic happens, you are going to strain your milk mixture into your warm potatoes, give that a nice thorough mix over some low heat, and this comes together a lot quicker than you might think. We obviously can't forget about the crunch topping either, which is probably going to be the best part of this. So into a blender or a food processor, you're just going to pull some fresh garlic and some chips and some bread. I know it's a weird combination. It should work if everything goes well. Because once you've got everything pulsed together in some nice coarse pieces, you're going to toast it in some butter first and then finish it off in your oven until everything gets nice and golden and crispy. Now while all of this chaos was happening, every 20 or 30 minutes or so, I was pulling my turkey out and glazing it in this delicious smelling brown sugar soy sauce glaze that we made. Again, if you want to see the exact proportion of ingredients, it's going to be down in the description. Uh, but the most important thing to know is baste your turkey, allow it to reach 140 degrees, let it get a nice crispy skin and it should be ready to go in about two hours. After I pulled it out and let it rest for a little while, I did my best to carve up the carcass and get nice slices of my breast meat. Honestly, this is smelling absolutely insane. I cannot wait to taste that outer layer of glaze. It has been many, many days, many hours on my feet. I could not be any more exhausted, but I am so beyond excited to try everything on this plate. So once I got what I thought looked like a perfect Thanksgiving dish, I gave it a try. I am so unbelievably exhausted right now. I started filming today at one o'clock. It's 3.30 a.m. And I've been filming the last day and a half pretty much also. Will it all be worth it? We are soon to find out. I think I'm most excited for the potatoes. Uh, most intrigued by the stuffing because I've never had any stuffing like this. Actually, let's do a cranberry first because I usually don't even bother eating this. I'm just not the biggest fan of cranberry sauce. It's just super tart. It's got like some, some bitter notes. You get the weird texture of all the skins of the fresh cranberry. Now that I think about it, why did I even bother make, <laughs> making this? <laughs> I'll be sharing everything with my family and friends, most likely, so. I'm gonna go for the turkey next, I think. The rub is pretty standard. I've used mixes like that before. It's the actual glaze that I'm really curious about to see if it even comes through at all. I think I glazed it three or four times. This is cooked pretty well. The flavor is there. The only main complaint I have is the layer of fat underneath the skin. It's almost so thick that I don't think I would have been able to get it crispy anyway. I was really hoping for just like a thin, crisp layer on the outside and then nice tender turkey on the inside. We have quite a significant ring of fat in between. A lot of people's complaints too about turkey is that it's usually really dry and kind of flavorless. I don't know if it was from the water that we put in the pan this is not dry whatsoever. This is super tender and juicy. Look at that. 
And last, and most importantly, the mashed potatoes. I'm so excited for that garlicky, crispy topping and a little garnish of parsley. I'm sure some of you noticed, because you guys notice everything, I didn't include the tarragon. Tarragon? <laughs> I think British people say it that way. I think they might. Somebody says it that way. Maybe Gordon Ramsay. Or either that or it sounds like a whole other word because it sounds familiar. <laughs> I left out a few things from the top because really all I wanted was those crispy breadcrumbs chips and then a little green from the parsley. I figured there was enough flavor in that milk mixture that went into the potato, so. Wow. <laughs> yeah, these are great. You would be surprised with how homogenous and creamy you can get potatoes with just a colander like that. Should I stop being cheap and get a potato ricer? Probably. But uh, I don't make mashed potatoes that often, so for the time being, it works fine. I'm trying to taste just the gravy alone. It's kind of hard. Bottles up. <laughs> I'm gonna be brutally honest. I could never see myself spending that much time on a gravy again. Use shortcuts, use stocks that are specifically made for gravies, use whatever you have to. Don't spend that much time. You have too much other things to make on Thanksgiving. If the bon appetit people watch this, they're gonna be upset. <laughs> You said last but not least, but you did not try the stuffing yet, I don't think. Really? I don't think you did. Because you went cranberry, turkey, You are correct. <laughs> last and... <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to taste the stuffing. I don't know how. There's only four things on my plate. It is such a strange combination. I've never had anything like this. It's not bad. I'm quite enjoying it. But the combination of like breakfast sausage and corn, it's kind of just bizarre. Like if I showed up to Thanksgiving, like the one time of the year, and I got this instead of the traditional kind I would normally have, I would miss it a little bit. Would I choose this over very traditional chicken or poultry flavored stuffing? No. Thanksgiving, 10 days early, I would say success. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, leave me a big old like. I can't even begin to imagine how long this video is gonna be. So if you're still around, I love you, you're the best. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody who celebrates it. I probably will not see you until the day after when we do our yearly Thanksgiving leftover hacks. Until then, have an amazing weekend. Peace. Super lazy. Try and make a meal tonight, they ain't pay me. Try and supersize my life with my A team. Yeah, our style wasn't wavy, but we had a vision. We can make it up to Obviously, the corn flavor is very forward. That's like what you get prominently. Predominantly? Prominently. Prominently. I think it's yeah. predominantly. No, it's like a predominant trait for genetics or something. Look up predominantly. <laughs> in the middle of a video. Yeah. Oh, wait, maybe. Oh! I think I, I, think I had an opposite. You would say the flavor is prominent, but the flavor is predominantly corn. Mm hmm, really? Yeah. But let wow. Me, let's, make, let's make sure. You just like collapsed. I, I feel like I want to collapse right now. Yeah. I can tell. I haven't sat down in 14 hours except on the bowl. <laughs> but I just want to put that in. Except on the bowl. I'll, I'll put it at the end. <laughs>